Overseer Slog, October 27th, 1976. Dr. Stefan Helm here. I'm upset, but I'm not deterred. Project Dilution continues today. With the odd case of Mr. Morris. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, or so they say. Morris, on the other hand, has been known to consume up to 12 apples a day, sometimes more. This odd compulsion, owing, it is suggested, to a lack of nutrition in his youth, has resulted in yet another curious delusion. Morris, a participant C, has been assigned to the green room, rather befitting an individual with a proclivity for Granny Smiths. Hello, Mr. Morris. Can you hear me clearly? Affirmative, Doctor. Uh, can I get some light in here? Oh, yes. My apologies. Yikes! Oh, thanks. Now then, describe your surroundings, please. I, I'm in a green room. The walls are green. The tiles on the floor are green. Even the sink and toilet are green. Can you describe the shade of green? It's a leafy green, the colour of a British summer. I don't want to say it, but I will anyway. It's an apple green. <laughs> Intentional. Do not trouble yourself with such matters at this stage, Mr. Morris. Instead, tell me your story. I'm eager to hear what happened to that arm of yours. Well... What can I say? I've always had a fondness for apple. Always. Apple pie, poached apples, apple muffins, you name it. I grew up in the city centre and never left. Not even on day trips with school. Was uh, 19 by the time I saw my first apple tree. <laughs> Bramley, you know. <laughs> I was captivated by it. But my favourite apple always has been the Granny Smith. So green, so shiny, so sweet. My apple habit, if you want to give it a name, reached new heights last month in the Lake District. I get out of the city when I can, hate it, full stop. Unfortunately, I have, shall we say, trouble with open spaces. I'm fine cooped up in a cabin with a view, but not so much out in the wild. Goes back to childhood, no doubt. Ah, I'm better off living the life of a drone, sentenced to a life of warehouse management. <laughs> uh, but that's by the by. So, I was up in the lakes, as I said, cooped up in a congenial cabin by Coniston Water, enjoying a view of the mountains and my own company. On the second evening, end of September this was, there came a gentle rapping at the cabin door. You see, I wasn't expecting any visitors, so it was with a great deal of hesitation that I went to the door. Uh, there was nobody there by the time I answered it, but, but on the decking outside was a wicker basket filled to the brim with, you guessed it, Granny Smith apples. What do you do? Uh, there was a note attached which read, Sample our delicious Granny Smiths, and in smaller print beneath, Remember to pace yourself. Although... Uh, a little strange. I figured that the apples had been dropped off by the owner of the cabin as some sort of welcome gift. The likelihood was slim, but I couldn't come up with any other explanation at the time. So, I took the basket inside, sat by the open fire, and tasted one of the apples. Doctor, it was divine, fabulously sweet, striking that perfect balance between crisp and tart, just how I like them. <laughs> and I couldn't eat just one either. Throwing caution to the wind and completely discounting the note's pace yourself warning, I ate a second and a third, one after the other. I mean, I didn't think it was too outrageous. A day isn't a day for Alan Morris if he hasn't eaten at least half a dozen apples. <laughs> well, I washed the fourth one down with a cup of tea and sat back in the big chair by the fire, thoroughly pleased with the day's good fortune. 
I drifted off shortly afterwards. When I awoke, it was dark outside, and I could hear the first drops of rain striking the trees overhead. I gathered my faculties and made myself another cup of tea. Though I am not a fan of being caught out in a thunderstorm, I'm a sucker for the light show if I'm safely indoors with a view. Yes. Soon enough, the rain was coming down in buckets.